Hey, hey, I'm Cam Day. Welcome to the channel and to today's video. As always, it is such a pleasure to have you. I hope you're doing well today. Welcome back if you're revisiting, and if you're new here, buckle in, we're gonna have a good time. Today, we're revisiting a previous video that I made. It's gotta be at least a year, maybe even close to two years ago now. I did my first thoughts, an initial demo and review of the Amica Styling Brush. It's a blow dry brush and especially for curly haired people, those types of tools can be really hit or miss. So I had to put it to the test myself. I gave my full review and I'll have it linked up here and also down in the description if you wanna revisit that. But today we're fast forwarding and seeing how I incorporate it in my daily routines, if and when I use it, do I still like it? Basically just an updated review because, you know, it's easy to get excited about something new and fresh and shiny, but you know, once you've had it for a while, how's it, how's it going? Is the spark still there? We'll find out. I am fresh out of the shower, fresh-ish, like it was maybe an hour or two ago. That's why I have my hair up. It's just to help train my roots a little bit because they tend to weigh themselves down and get kind of flat. And I always want volume at my crown. That's a personal goal for me. So that's why my hair is up. I do have some product in my hair. I did a deep cleanse. I actually did a mask. As much as I love hair masks, I don't do them nearly enough. I think it's just out of pure laziness. But it was just with the uh, Aztec Benzonite Healing Clay, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, some water. I just really needed a refresh, get some product buildup taken care of, and I got really antsy and gave myself a trim last night. So that's also why I'm blowing my hair out, just so I can see how even things are and if I need to clean anything up. Anyway, to get to the point, in my first video, I had three main points that I really wanted to put this blow dry brush to the test for. The first was the amount of time that it took for me to complete the process. The getting ready, the blowing out, the whole thing. On a good day, my old hair styling process would be wash my hair, blow it out, just with a regular blow dryer, if I had one of those smoothing attachments, you know, that like fancy hairstylists use with a round brush except I didn't have a round brush, I'd use that. Um, then, you know, have a total frizz moment. And then I'd use a straightener to then smooth everything out, style it, add a little bit of curl if I wanted. And that process on a good day could take about 25 minutes, but that's really, that was a rare day. And regularly it would be a little bit more close to like 40 minutes so i wanted to see if this could help cut down on that time because that's really what i'm wanting out of this is i want more convenience i want it to be a one-stop shop as opposed to like the whole shebang that i used to do my number two focus was how much volume i could get out of it because using a blow dry brush and just blow drying in general i tend to think that i can get more volume at the roots of my hair and throughout the body than if i were to just use a flat iron like i used to and as i mentioned my hair though it does have some curl to it it definitely tends to get weighed down depending on the length depending on the products i'm using and also just it, if my hair is parted in the same way for months, it gets used to it and it just wants to lay flat. So I try and give a little bit of life and train my roots a little bit more by using something like this. So does it still deliver? We will find out. And third, and finally, will this actually be the only styling tool that I need to use? Again, to the convenience factor, I want to whittle down the time that it takes me to do my hair curly girls, especially if you're like not a daily stylist like I am, I still feel like every time I do my hair, I'm figuring it out. And some days I'm at the mercy of my curls. Some days I can put them in their place, but it is, it is never, no two days are ever the same. So that's why using something like this will hopefully, you know, get you to the point of a little bit more consistency. So that's really what I want out of this. If I don't have to use my flat iron after, that's a dream. And if I do, maybe if it's minimal, we can handle it because flyaways and little sprouts are kind of inevitable at some point. So we're going to put this to the test. I'll give you the updated review and you do with that information what you please. Before we go in, I do have, <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed, but I do have to show you the state of my brush. I don't know if this will get picked up on camera, so I'll try and do my best to be as descriptive as possible. But inside the comb are boar hair bristles. In addition to the regular standard like uh, plastic bristles with little nubbies on the top but because it's boar hair and because it's you know 
it just keeps going all the way around. Um, I have so much hair in here. And especially if your hair has texture to it, or it's for anyone with hair that uses this, but it, you can't, yeah. Um, I gotta do a better job at cleaning this. So that's something to keep in mind. I did think about it when I first got it, how I was gonna actually keep up with this, and lo and behold, I did not do very well at keeping up with this. I haven't used this in a couple months, but I have used it about 10 times since I first reviewed this. So I do have just trust me on this okay that's all i'm saying um i have cleaned it out before i just clearly haven't cleaned it out recently oh my gosh there's dust everywhere so this makes me a little nervous this really grosses me out i know it comes from my head and a lot of it is just like fuzzies and hair but those are things that i just don't enjoy i don't know about you but Especially when hair is wet and it's <sighs> not my fave, not my fave, but I have hair and it's on my head and it will remain the case until that is not the case for me anymore. Anyway, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, just be on top of your, your game and keep it clean because I think that will improve your experience and truly just think about the functionality of it. If it's got a lot of hair in the way and a lot of other stuff that it's com that the air is competing against to get outside of the brush and then into your hair to actually style, it may just make it a little less efficient. So make sure it's clean and clear and under control um, as best as you can so that you're getting a fresh start. Next, I want to talk protection, because it's always important, heat protection specifically. When I wash my hair, afterward I used a leave-in conditioner, uh, just an anti-frizz conditioner, because I knew I was going to be blowing my hair out, I wanted it to be smooth and sleek. And then I used this Briogeo Farewell Frizz, it's a blow-dry perfection and heat protectant creme. I really like this whole line. Um, from Briogeo. I like the way it smells and I like the idea of using a cream. I feel like I can maybe be a little bit more thorough with my application. And then to really seal the deal, I've been using this Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers, Hairdressers Invisible Oil Heat slash UV Protective Primer. I use this almost on a daily basis to be honest. I truly just love the way it smells and I feel like if I can just spritz a little bit of protection on, it's it's helpful. It's more of a mental thing for me, I think, but I like the texture of it. It's really light. It doesn't weigh my hair down, which again, I've mentioned is something that I deal with just because of how fine my hair is. And, you know, we need moisture in the hair, but I don't need anything thick and heavy that's just going to really make it feel greasy or too heavy. So I really enjoy this. I feel like it's also a little bit hydrating and I don't know, two is better than one. We'll see. So that's my re recommendation for you. Use a heat protectant. I did go through the Amica uh, heat shield spray. I did enjoy it, but I also did not. As I mentioned when I first tried it, my thoughts have kind of remained. It's an aerosol spray and it's not a very focused spray. So when I spray, it just ends up like, I, I don't even know if I actually got it on my hair and I just feel like it is a little bit of a waste of product. I think it's a really nice product itself, but maybe it's the packaging that could be different. I didn't repurchase. I just feel like I was barely getting it on my hair and it's at 20 something dollars. So I just, I need a little bit more bang for my buck. So with these, I feel like I can target a little bit better. Although these get wet and the aerosol spray was very dry. It was almost like a dry shampoo texture. So that definitely had it, that's a bonus in its favor. So if you try it, Definitely give it a go, but just do your best to make it focused if you can. All right, I think I've got you caught up to speed. I can gab about this a lot, so I will hush and just get to the blow drying, and then we'll get to the finished product and give you the final thoughts. I am gonna re-wet my hair a little bit because it has started to dry, and I noticed that it's a little easier to comb through the brush when your hair is a little bit easier to manage. When it's wet doing smaller sections tends to work better for me and i think it may for you too so just keep that in mind and like this is probably as big of a section as i'd want to do with you know the brush at one so kick it on to the highest gear i find that that works best for me and we'll get going Love. 
slow and slow. I would like I go really slow the first few times to really get the hair dry. So be patient. Okay, we are at the halfway point, obviously. I think it was about 12, 13, 14 minutes for me to do that whole side, which was pretty not bad in my opinion. Um, I just need to take a cool down break because as I mentioned the first time, this thing gets hot. Crazy enough, right? It's a lot of heat coming out of all sides of this brush and especially as you have to get closer to the face, I find in my experience, um, if you hold for any longer than a couple seconds, it just starts to get really warm. So that's something to keep in mind. Obviously, we have a straight side. It still has a lot of volume. It's got, I don't want to call it frizz. I think it's just some of my, okay, maybe it's a little frizz. It's some dry um, flyaways and things like that. But I am happy to be moving at the pace that I am. That is one of the main takeaways out of my multiple uses of using this, is that I definitely start to, I've started to find a little bit more of a flow that makes using this a lot easier. And volume wise, I definitely am getting the volume that I'm wanting because I know that my hair tends to just want to lay on my skull. So it's not perfect because it is a little fluffier than I want, but I'd rather start with volume and then work with it later and go from there. So this is the initial first pass. Then I usually tend to do a little bit more of like a touch up once my whole head is done. And I'll give you the rest once we're done. I'm gonna get back to it. To cut to the chase finally, I know it's been, this video has already gone longer than I planned on it, but like I said, once I get started, it's hard for me to stop. But all in all, do I enjoy having this part of my routine? Short answer, yes. Is it perfect? No. Does it knock everything off my list the way that I wanted it to? No. As far as time goes, I find myself kind of in an equivalent time frame. So like I said, 25 to 40 minutes is usually how long it takes me to heat style my hair with two separate tools, a blow dryer and a flat iron. And spoiler alert, I don't ever just use this. Okay, I rarely just use this blow dry brush to style my hair because if you can't tell already like i said one of the things i want when i do my hair is to have some volume and i have the volume but it's just i would say it's not refined enough for me i feel like it's you know it's still a little bit frizzy now yes i can put some product on my hand and kind of smooth things out which i definitely think will help however on the perimeter of my head all of my flyaways and some of the shorter hairs on top of my head definitely need some smoothing so i still rely on my flat iron for that but it takes me like literally two minutes because I just do the perimeter. I get close to my ears because this is always hard for me to get close enough with just this brush just because it's so big and I can't get too close to the ear without singeing myself. So I still get kind of bumps like, yeah, I still get some bumps by the ears. So to smooth that out and also to create a little bit more uniformity in the way that I want my curls to lay or just the body and the shape that I want in my hair, I will rely on that. However, just to minimize the amount of heat, like I probably will end up doing this today. Once I get my hair to this point and I do the first step of blow drying and getting a little bit of body into it, I will do a no heat hairstyle, like heatless curls. So either using, you know, leggings or the robe belt loop, you know, the belt of a robe. Um, there's plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube, on TikTok, there, Instagram, like it's everywhere. Um, but it's a great way to save your hair from extra heat, especially if you've got curls and you don't heat style your hair very often just to protect them, like me. Um, Cause I would say like at most, I would straighten my hair once a quarter and then any less than that is a lot more standard for me. So getting this far, putting my hair in a heatless curl style, sleeping on it and then the next day and for the next week or so, it does a really good job on my curls. So I do recommend that if you're wanting to reduce the heat, but if you're in a little bit more of a pinch, you might just have to go over it with a flat iron like I would, and I still think it's worth it. You know, I don't have to use a brush and a 
blow dryer and get my arms going all crazy. This is so lightweight. Once you get the hang of it, it really makes it a lot easier to just get through the hair. And this is the smoothest my hair has ever looked compared to when I would just use a blow dryer because my hair would be like, it gets real crazy real fast. So there's that. It checks number two off the list. I get that volume. Now, it's not the most voluminous at the roots. And again, I think it's just the width of this. When I try and, for example, take my hair and like go like this, I feel like I'm creating some... Um, some space here to really like blow the hair against the follicle though maybe I'm doing it wrong um, if you do have tips for volume or if you realize that I'm I could be doing it a different way please let me know um, it still seems to get the job done I just have to be mindful of how I style my hair while it's drying too um, if I don't automatically go from wet hair to using the blow dry brush. I need to kind of train my roots a little bit, but that's okay. I can handle that. One of my last points and hopeful pointers for you, if you maybe have noticed in some of the footage of me actually doing my hair with this, um, and I mentioned this in the first video and I still struggle with it just because I'm not used to the process of it. If you have clips and hair ties and things, please grab a couple of them, at least two or three, because they're going to be really helpful as you make the way as you make your way with this through your hair because let's say you're trying to get this piece done whether this is still curly yet to be styled or you've already done it as you're going through especially because you want to get close to the root and you want it to be you know just uniformly straight you want to bring the brush close to the root and then brush through but look I'm bringing up this whole bottom layer so it's not a clean layer and it's not a clean process so really what helps is isolating all of your hair if you have stuff that's already done pin it back if you have stuff that's yet to be done pin it on the other side that way you can use full range full motion with this and not pick up any other hair because that happens to me all the time while I'm doing it and it just gets a little annoying but not the end of the world hopefully that helps okay very last thing thank you for bearing with me do you need to pay a hundred dollars for this that's a great question, and that I do ultimately want to leave up to you. I am very happy with my purchase from Amika. It's still working and going strong for me almost two years later, I think, one or two years later. And I personally just like Amika styling products and hair care. So I'm paying a little bit more for the brand, I find, because from what I've seen, a lot of these blow dry brushes are very similar. And unless they come out with totally radical and different technology. If you have a Revlon, if you have, you know, another fill-in-the-blank brand, I think you'll be okay. So more importantly, I hope this was just helpful for you in the world of styling tools and blow-dry brushes. It doesn't have to be specific to Amika, um, but they do go on sale. They do offer bundles from time to time. This product with some of their other like heat styling tools, which when I first bought this, it was with two full-size pro styling products and that was a deal that I couldn't pass up because they were like $20 or $25 a bottle so that's like $50 plus the brush so it really made my bang it really banged my buck it really made it was really worth it was it was worth it more bang in my buck it, it made sense anyway I still consider myself to be fairly amateur when it comes to at-home heat hair styling. I can diffuse my hair when it's curly, you know, get the job done. It's very product heavy for me. When it comes to using something like this, although prepping your hair well can really help, I did a lot of like really moisturizing things beforehand and I trimmed it so it does feel healthy and it's still got some shine, but don't overdo it. I do want to leave you, I promise, with one last piece of advice. Um, to, on the note of don't overdo it, because this brush has hot air forced through all of these little holes every which way. I do think that over time it has caused some breakage in my hair. And I know that I'm not the most skilled while using something like this, but because I think we buy these things so that we don't have to have a lot of skill, I just want to let you know. Like, be really careful. Go slowly. Don't yank the brush through your hair. And if you need to go over things multiple times or go in multiple directions, you know, do that. But just be gentle with your hair and unless you're really used to it and you know the deal and you have 
the tools and products to really protect and repair and restore your hair. Um, just know that this is a heating a, a heated styling product and heat damage and just damage in general usually comes after a certain amount of time of using it especially without that like repair process so as i'm figuring that out i just want to let you know because i looked at some of the footage from when i first tried this a long time ago and then kind of moments in between up to now and i definitely noticed that i have some more flyaways is that directly correlatable with this not necessarily, I can't be that scientific, but it just, it makes sense to me because I'm tugging on my hair and I have air blowing it every which way. So just making it, it it's probably damaging it. So all that said, I do think that blow dry brushes have a great place in your hair styling routine. If you have any other questions or more importantly, if you have any tips, if you've been using this for a while, if you've heard or learned from someone that you know, they have something that just totally blew your mind that improved your experience, please let me know because I'm always open to it and I'd love to be able to impart that down the line if ever I do any more tutorials, reviews, or anything like that because I do want to get better. Um, I just find that I end up doing the same thing and I'm still kind of in that like normal, mediocre, I can get the job done phase, but I definitely would like to get a little bit more finesse with it. And with that, Please take a deep breath with me from the belly. I tend to like go a mile a minute and lock myself in a hot room with heat and just get a little crazy. So thanks as always for bearing with me. And like I said, if you have any questions or tips or recommendations or anything like that, drop them down in the comments. I'm always happy to have a conversation with you there. And wherever you are on this journey, I'm happy to be there with you. That's why I do this and we're just growing together. So I clearly have a lot to learn and a lot to master, I would say. But as far as, you know, using something like this, it definitely helps me in that journey and just make things a little bit easier. While yes, there's still a little bit of a learning curve. But anyway, thanks again for spending some time with me today. I hope whenever and wherever you are, you have a wonderful rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and just know that you're fabulous and you're cared for and I love you. I'll see you in the next one.